Today we're going to take a close look at Jupyter Notebooks for Python and how you can start your notebooks quickly in various environments using server stack tooling. Jupyter is an exciting initiative to support an open standards language agnostic interactive computing platform. The project started from its core three languages of Julia, Python, and R, which is where it gets the Jupyter name. Initially forged as Interactive Python, the Jupyter Notebook has become an indispensable tool that is applicable to a wide range of interactive use cases, especially in the fields of data science, modeling, and analysis. Using a Jupyter Notebook with Python gives a first-class experience and tooling support across many software tools and cloud providers. To make this process easier for those working with data from Service Stack services, we've added functionality to the Service Stack X tool as well as our instant client apps hosted service so that you can leverage all the advantages of typed end-to-end -end services in your everyday usage of notebooks. To walk through an example, let's have a look at working locally with Jupyter Lab, which is Jupyter's next generation web-based development environment designed around maintaining an entire workspace of notebooks in a powerful web UI. Before we get started, you want a few things installed, Python 3.7 or higher, the latest .NET 5 SDK, and the Server Stack X tool. If you don't have the Service Stack X tool installed, you can install it using the command .NET tool install gx. Next, you'll want to install Jupyter Lab itself. This can be done using the Python package manager pip with the command pip install Jupyter Lab. Once installed, you can launch Jupyter Lab's UI from a directory containing your notebooks where your notebooks will be accessible from its built-in web-based file explorer. Now we have all the parts in place, we're going to work with a hosted service tech server that allows us to fetch US COVID vaccination rate data by state. This hosted demo can be found at the address covid vac watchnetcoreio Having a look at the metadata route of this demo app in our browser, we can see there are two endpoints hosted. One to get all the location names of the US states, and the other to query the vaccination rate data itself. We're going to use the query vaccination rate endpoint with our notebook, so we'll need the name of the request DTO listed here in the metadata. Back to our command prompt, we can now start Jupyter Lab with the command jupyter-lab. If this doesn't work for you, be sure that your Python scripts directory is on your system's path, which might not be the case if you've installed Python from the Windows Store. Once started up, Jupyter Lab will open a browser window to the Jupyter Lab UI, starting at our local directory. We're starting from scratch, so we don't have any notebooks yet to work with. We could create a new notebook in Jupyter Lab directly and start writing a code we need, but a faster way to start working with data from a service stack service is now available in the X tool, which generates a notebook on demand for a specific host and service. Here we'll use the COVID vaccination watch application along with the name of the endpoint we're interested in. Running the command x Jupyter space the host address of the service stack host space the request name, in this case query vaccination rates. This will pull the required code to interact with this specific server ready to open and run. Navigating back to our Jupyter Lab UI, we can see our newly generated file. Opening it up, we have four cells provided for us, including the first cell, which contains the code for installing the Service Stack Python client library, all the required Python DTO code, and initializing the Service Stack client with the specified host address. Once the first cell is completed running, the following cells already have the code to query the specified endpoint in the command and then display the data returned. Even if we don't use the specific output, starting with this notebook has saved us from doing a lot of repetitive code and given us a great starting point to work with the data so we can focus on the task at hand. This is a great time saver since it's common that notebooks can be throwaway to answer quick data related questions or prep data for one-off tasks, avoiding the need to write most of the plumbing code yourself all while generating type hints for your Python means you can save a bunch of time by getting to the important part of the problem straight away. For those that prefer to use IDEs like PyCharm, this workflow works largely in the same way. We can navigate to our notebooks directory in our project, run xjupyter, the server stack host, and the endpoint we want to use, generate the notebook file, and we are already up and running. Another way to take advantage of the service stack generated notebooks is within the various premium cloud hosted solutions. AWS SageMaker allows us to host secure notebook instances with access to a variety of first class integrations for machine learning right inside your AWS environment. 
Because the Service Stack X tool is generating the notebook on demand with a specific hosted server you'll be getting data from, the generated notebook uploads and runs in this environment just as easily. Moving back to PyCharm, the workflow with JetBrains' own premium hosted notebook solution Data Law is very similar, but here we can upload our notebooks straight from the IDE. So provided the hosted notebooks have access to the Service Stack instance over a network connection, be that public internet or private connection, the generated notebooks are completely portable. The last hosted example we have is Google's free notebook solution, Google Colab. Google Colab stores notebooks in Google Drive and runs them in a dedicated environment which you can access with your Google account. This gives you the ability to run and share your notebooks with free CPU and even GPU compute resources. The approach of using XJupyter command line works fine here as well, but since Google Colab runs off the files stored in Google Drive, we've added Google Drive integrations straight into instant client apps. This can be a great option for your users of your Service Stack services as well, especially if you provide sample data useful to students or free trial users that are just getting started. All they need to do is put in the base URL of your Service Stack host into Instant Client Apps, specify which services they want to use, click to save the generated notebook directly to Google Drive and open the notebook in Google Colab. No additional infrastructure on your part is required, Instant Client Apps is free to use and no account is required. Just as we can see here using the COVID VacWatch demo hosted by ServiceStack, even just wrapping a public data set from GitHub, we've made it easier for anyone to interrogate that data at no cost with just a browser thanks to services like Google Colab. Because the Jupyter file format persists the output results of your cells right into the notebook file, you can even save this file back into GitHub itself for ease of sharing of your results. Jupyter for Python is becoming easier to use and more popular than ever for data science and modeling. Having your data hosted with a service tech service enables you to lower the barrier of entry to these amazing tools by automating the plumbing. This saves time and effort so that you and your users can get the most out of your valuable data sources. And to top it all off, the generated types coming directly from the server you're integrating with means you get typed end-to-end -end clients even in a dynamic language like Python. That's it for this video, be sure to check out Instant Client Apps at apps.servicestack.net and thanks for watching.